This video brought to you by ribtea.com, where their focus is to help men look better and feel better so they can be at their best all day, every day. Bombed and massacred and shot their way around the world, committing appalling atrocities against people in Paris, in Nice, in London, killing That's kids, right. going to pop concerts, running people over uh, on the promenade in Nice. Let's not forget what this guy was. So yesterday should have been a great day for America and a great day for the world. Instead, the narrative is, let's try and find where Trump went wrong in the way he spoke about it. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you to all my PayPal, Patreon, and Subscribestar supporters. I really appreciate it. We're just a few days out from the successful ending of El Baghdadi, and yet we still have supposedly objective news sources who are doing their best to frame the terrorist leader in the most positive light imaginable. On Sunday and Monday, several of these sources became PR firms for the ISIS leader, with Washington Post calling him an Islamic scholar, and other sources is portraying him as a great leader. One thing I noticed right away is that they're talking way more positively about this ISIS leader than they do about their own president. It's just another sign of the increasing insanity brought on by Trump derangement syndrome. You might think that the Washington Post and other sources might exercise a little editorial caution given the past few days, but instead what we see is them continuing to lavish the former Islamic warlord with praise. Ever since Donald Trump described Baghdadi as a coward, hate-filled demagogues pretending to be journalists apparently feel the need to defend him against that charge. These most recent outrageous claims come from unhinged never-Trumpers and regular CNN analysts Max Boot and Philip Mudd. In case you forgot who these lunatics are, let me give you a refresher. This government, Phil, I let's be honest. Zero. Phil, let's be That's honest. It. I'm not talking about your role with the federal government. I'm talking about oh, the contracting you talking gigs about? that you talking about General a Hayden? consultant. Correct. Like that doesn't happen. I have That's zero consulting relationship with the U.S. government. Zero. I'm not talking, Phil, that's a good talking point. I'm not talking about relationship with the government. I'm talking about in the private sector. Fancy make my comments, Scott. Is this your ahead, show, or can I make a yeah, comment You interrupted here. me, let, so let I'll interrupt you back. Jerk. Go ahead, Scott. Is that you and Kate? No, I'm embarrassed to sit here with you, Max. I'm embarrassed to sit here with you. You're not letting me finish, Scott, okay? And with Scott, your sanctimonious okay? bullshit. That's what I'm embarrassed about. Clearly, these are men in full control of their mental faculties. First, we have Max Boot, who would say the sky is red if Trump said it's blue claims the ISIS leader wasn't a coward, and his reasoning for this is as follows. The assertion that Baghdadi died as a coward was, in any case, contradicted by the fact that, rather than be captured, he blew himself up. Right. I mean, according to Max Boot, running away into a cave, blowing yourself up and your family after committing monstrous acts on thousands of innocent people is not an act of cowardice. This shows you plainly the kind of people we're dealing with over at CNN. We're also dealing with people like Philip Mudd, a man who constantly looks like he's clinging to sanity. According to him, we shouldn't celebrate the death of an ISIS leader because he's just a human being. Don't use that language which will echo around the Middle East about things like dogs and whimpering. A human being has died, we don't celebrate that. A human being has died, we don't celebrate that. I'm not even sure what to say to that. I mean, how do you respond to such brazen cognitive dissonance? Yes, he was technically a human being, but he was a human being who brought death, pain, suffering, and misery upon thousands of innocent people. Who wouldn't be happy that he could no longer do that? Just, uh, wow. Somehow, it still surprises me that we're now on day three of this topic because the media keeps putting out these glowing, almost affectionate eulogies of this very, very bad man. National Public Radio, which gets some of its funds from taxpayer dollars, praised the terrorist, calling him a real leader who led a movement that we've never seen before. Technically, this is true, but couldn't you report this without making it sound so positive? They continued describing ISIS in terms that you might expect to hear them talking about the birth of a new country, marveling at how he administered the cities and collected taxes. I've been saying it for a long, long time now, but we must pull all public funding from NPR. 
At this point, though, they've managed to get their funding from a lot of different sources, and it's only actually a small amount that comes from taxpayer dollars, but it should be zero coming from taxpayer dollars. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please make sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. While you're at it, hit that notification bell so you'll be alerted about all my new content. Since YouTube demonetizes just about everything I upload, I depend on you, the community, to support this channel and keep it going. If you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing to me on Patreon or Subscribestar. You can also send a donation on PayPal and I deeply appreciate it. Without all of you, I wouldn't be able to continue doing this. Thank you and keep coming back.